Welcome to a screencast on a new concept, our last concept we're going to see in our study of set theory on a thing called a Cartesian product. Now a Cartesian product sounds fancy, but you're actually very familiar with this idea. Just think back to where you first learned about R2, the XY plane here. R2, we call it R2 because it's really two copies of the real numbers, and sometimes you'll see it as R cross R. You've got one real number line going left to right and one real number line going up and down. And if we put those two real number lines together, Together, we can create a grid and use that uh, Cartesian plane, as it's called, because it was uh, first conceptualized by Rene Descartes back in the day. Uh, that Cartesian plane can be used to plot ordered pairs of numbers. Okay, so every time you plot a point here, let's assume, for example, that every uh, grid mark here is one unit. If I put a point right there on the grid, then that's at one, two, three, four units on this real number line, and then two units up on that real number line. So I have four out this way, two up this way, and we called that point four comma two. So points that are in this plane or in this set here are ordered pairs of points, and the first number is a real number and so is the second one and they do matter if I looked at the at the ordered pair 2 comma 4 instead then that would be a completely different point in the plane I would go to 2 here and then 1 2 3 4 up here so that's what 2 4 is and so there are ordered pairs and each uh, coordinate uh, we had a first coordinate and a second coordinate was a real number and that's why we called it R cross R so if you wanted to write this in set notation the uh, Cartesian plane the XY plane here is the set of all such ordered pairs where the first coordinate is a real number and the second coordinate is a real number. So this idea of uh, the Cartesian plane here is a way of grouping two numbers together in order. And if you think about it, grouping two objects in order comes up a lot in life. I think of thinking about teaching. If you're teaching, you might have a class here, for example, that's got, say, maybe a lot of students, but here are four students and here are their grades on the last test. Now, if you're entering these grades into a database, say like a Blackboard type system, then you're going to want to put these things in order. You want to pair off Alice with her grade and Bob with his grade and Clarence with his grade and Dora with her grade. So really you can think of uh, the data here in our little database as an ordered pair. Uh, I could represent each of these uh, data points here as an ordered pair. Uh, let's say Alice comma 90. And so the first coordinate of this ordered pair is a name of a student in the class, and the second coordinate here of this ordered pair is a number between 0 and 100 that would represent that student's grade. Bob would be represented as the ordered pair Bob, comma, 92. In fact, databases really work this way. They pair things off, or actually there could be several different data fields, and so not an ordered pair, but an ordered triple or quadruple, where you have a bunch of different data uh, collected together in order. So clearance... Clarence's ordered pair, Clarence, comma, 73, and so on. So what we're doing here is we're extending the idea of the Cartesian plane, the XY plane, to include things that aren't necessarily numbers. <coughs> so this is right, Dora's ordered pair out here, 88. So you could go through the entire class roster. Maybe there are 20-some-odd students uh, beyond just these four, and you know every student and their test grade could be represented as an ordered pair, say S comma G, where S uh, belongs to this set, the set of all students in the class, and G belongs to this set right here, the set 0 through 100 that represents a grade. So this notion of ordered pairs actually is pretty applicable to things beyond just numbers. We can pair off text with numbers or, uh, or any kind of object with any other kind of object. And that gets us to the idea of the Cartesian product. So let's let A and B be any any two sets whatsoever. Maybe they're sets of numbers, maybe one of them is a set of names and the other is a set of numbers, maybe they're both names, maybe they're one is a set of uh, happy faces and frowny faces and the other is a set of states in the United States. We don't care, just any two sets whatsoever. Then we're going to define the Cartesian product and we're going to read this thing here as A cross B. The Cartesian product is the set of all ordered pairs whose first coordinate belongs to A and whose second coordinate belongs to B. That is, if I were going to write this out as a set, A cross B, the Cartesian product, is the set of all ordered pairs where X belongs to A and that should say Y, Y belongs to B. 
And so this is just a generalization of what you already have learned about the XY plane. And it also comes in very handy to describe things like the student grade database that we just constructed here, the Cartesian product set of all ordered pairs uh, with the first coordinate in the first set and the second coordinate in the second set. So let's look at an example here. I'm thinking about kids. I have three kids of my own, and they often fight over things at home. So let's suppose I have three kids, Jack, Bill, and Annie. I'm going to put those in the set K. And let's let T be the set of these three toys, a, call, a ball, a car, and some blocks. Now I would be wondering, if I were taking care of these kids, what are all the possible ways that I could pair off a kid with a toy? Well, that would the, the set of all possible pairings there would be the Cartesian product K cross T. This is going to be the set of all ordered pairs let's say little k, little t, such that k belongs to the set of kids and t belongs to the set of toys. So what is that Cartesian product? What does it consist of? Well, let's start listing out the ordered pairs. This is going to be a large set consisting of ordered pairs. Well, one ordered pair uh, would be jack and ball. Any ordered pair where that has two coordinates, with the first coordinate being a kid's name from the set K, and the second coordinate being a toy from the set T, is an element of K cross T. So there are probably, you can think ahead, there are going to be nine of these things. I could pair Jack off of the ball. I could give Jack the car. I could give Jack the blocks. I'm running out of room here, so let me just tuck that in there. I could also uh, have a pairing where Bill has the ball. Bill has the car, or Bill has the blocks. And then finally, all the pairings that involve Annie. And that would just be uh, Annie could have the ball, Annie could have the car, or Annie could have the blocks. And that set, if I close off this last ordered pair and then put a giant set brace up here to pair it off with this set brace that we started with, that set of nine things is the Cartesian product. I could even plot them if I wanted to, I guess, kind of like an R2. We don't often do that. We just sort of think of the set of pairs. And those pairings mean something. Okay, The pairings are important. They do come in order. I need to have a kid's name first and a toy second. And uh, the kid's name has to actually come from K. The toy's name has to come from T. The set of all such pairs would be my Cartesian product product. So let's do a couple of concept checks here to see how well we're understanding these basic ideas. So take a look at the ordered pair that consists of two numbers, the square root of 2, comma, the number 1. What uh, set or sets could that ordered pair be considered an element of? Here are five choices and I want you to pause the video and select all that apply. Well, let's mark off some things that are definitely incorrect to begin with. A can't be right. A is just the set of real numbers, and uh, an ordered pair is not a real number. It's a, it's a couple of real numbers. It's a pair of real numbers. So uh, the only thing that's in R are individual real numbers, like radical 2 by itself would be an element of R, but not an ordered pair with radical 2 in it. Okay, I need to be in a Cartesian product somewhere. Now, B could work uh, because... 2, 1, radical 2, 1 is an ordered pair, and the first coordinate is a real number, so it belongs to this, and 1 is a real number, and it belongs to this, so that would certainly work. Uh, R cross Z also works, because the, it's an ordered pair, this is an ordered pair where the first coordinate belongs to the real numbers, and the second coordinate belongs to the integers, so that would work as well. D does not work. And why is that? D does not work because the first coordinate here is not an element of the rational numbers. As we've proven and seen before, square root of 2 is an irrational number. So although 1 does belong to the integers, square root of 2 does not belong to Q. And so uh, this ordered pair does not belong to Q cross Z. Here are, uh, on the other hand, some things that do belong to Q cross Z. Uh, anything that's an ordered pair where I have a rational number in the first position and an integer in the second position. So something like 3 halves comma 17 would be an element of Q cross C, but radical 2 comma 1 is not. And finally, uh, this last uh, set here doesn't work either. Um, even though this belongs to R cross C, it does not belong to Z cross R because the order matters. Okay, this is a square root of 2 comma 1. Square root of 2 does not belong to the integers, and so this ordered pair does not belong to that Cartesian product. So the only correct answers here are B and C.
Now, speaking of this last issue here that we just discussed, here's another concept check. What's the relationship between A cross B and B cross A? Uh, a similar Cartesian product, but I'm reversing the order uh, here. Uh, is A cross B a subset of B cross A? Is it equal to B cross A? Or is there just really no relationship between that set and B cross A? Well, the answer here is essentially C. There's not really any relationship uh, in terms of subsets or equality between A cross B and B cross A. And I think we saw that in the last concept check. We had this uh, ordered pair of square root of 2 comma 1 that was an element of R cross the integers. Okay, because 2 uh, is an element of R and 1 is an element of the integers. But if I keep the same ordered pair, uh, that is not an element of Z cross R because or square root of 2 is not an element of uh, the integers, and so that fails. So certainly uh, there's no subset in, uh, relationship, and therefore there's no equality relationship. Now there is a sort of symmetry. There is a, a sort of relationship between those two sets that we're going to explore a little further in Chapter 6 when we talk about functions. They are very similar to each other. The only difference is that the order is reversed. For example, the ordered pair 1, comma, radical 2 would belong to uh, the set z cross r. So maybe there's some sort of a, 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 an operation or a transformation I can do on an element of one Cartesian product that gets me into the Cartesian product I have by reversing the order. But for now, there's no relationship that's really evident there in terms of subsets or equality. So that's the idea of the Cartesian product, just generalizing the notion of R2 in your old-fashioned algebra uh, XY plane. And it's very useful and very handy. And in the next video, we're going to look at how do we prove things about Cartesian products. So thanks for watching.